Do you meet up with other elements of Gilmore's much? Not much, really. I got to know Harry quite well when I was working at a project near where he lives. Quite a long-term project. We used to go to um, various different places <laughs> afterwards because he lived about four miles away from where I was working. Um, made quite a few videos then. Unfortunately, you can't view them anymore, and maybe I'll let Harry uh, tell you how that come about. Well, Dennis uh, was visiting the UK fairly recently with his family. Che, Dennis, me all met up and went around the Science Museum. I uh, did that, so I met him. There's also a guy called Randy, uh, Tarzan and Gaunt's, Gaunt's, I think this is um, his YouTube name. I met up with him when he was over here. Uh, so, yeah, I do like meeting people from uh, YouTube. But to film lifts with other people um, could be a bit difficult. I mean, I always think that um, if I film on my own, then I've got lots of time. Um, with me being a bit of a perfectionist, I can go back and film things like two or three times without the other person getting bored. Because I like to take my time to do stuff. And to be honest, I don't really like other people around while I'm filming. I like to be able to think straight. Because otherwise, if I don't film something, I like really get annoyed. And then I have to go back and film it again. Uh, so meeting up with people for social occasions, you know, just to say hello, uh, that'd be great. What's your view of elevator surfing? I've done this a few times, but I don't really enjoy it. I prefer to put the camera on top of the lift car and let the camera do the filming. It's quite exciting, really. You know, you set your camera up at the right angle. And also with my latest camera, it's got um, uh, Wi-Fi. So I can see the picture coming out from my camera from my phone. So then I can put the camera in a particular place close the doors and then I can view on my on my uh, phone what it's actually pointing at. So I prefer to stick the camera on top of the lift car instead of me being on top of the lift car. I've done it a few times, I didn't really enjoy it and I prefer still camera angles rather than moving ones. Here it comes from Mr. the Mighty Mr. Che from your own YouTube channels. Which is your favourite movie? Oh a question here for me. Mine has to be the DMR lift. One of the first movies that I did with my Otis friend, that's something that no one's ever going to be able to film again unless they are extremely lucky. That was a classic. Uh, ripped out a long time ago now, unfortunately. Uh, the other one is probably my um, videos from Saudi Arabia. Uh, the motor rooms out there, well, <laughs> the ones that I found were unlocked. It's brilliant. And some of those old lifts that are probably never going to get modernised. Which lift or YouTube movie is your favourite? Uh, if you look down my favourites, movies that I've favourited, there's quite a few of them. But the one that I remember particularly is the one that Ben did of that, um, it's Coney or Marriott Scott lift in that car park. Here it is. motor room oh my god the um, those, those motors look uh, creepy uh, I don't know what it is about them and the noise that roaring noise and you can hear all those relays clicking in the background uh, I think that has to be my favorite YouTube movie of someone else's Mr. Scatia, what's the tallest building you have visited and managed to get gain access into the motor room? Now this would take me back to the 19, no, the 2000s. The company I worked for did lots of buildings in London. Uh, one of them was this place, uh, London City Tower. In here, I think they've probably been modernised now. Well, I know they have been modernised. There were some lifts at the front of the building, the main passenger lifts, which were 1980s Otis lifts, the ones with the green fluorescent, vacuum fluorescent displays um, for the floor indicators, those ones. Then at the back of the building was another lift which went up to the same uh, level. I mean, I think that was a, like a 22 story building. There was an old Otis lift at the back. Now, I went there probably about three years ago now just to peer into the, the loading bay and it was still there. I haven't been in there recently, but both of those motor rooms you could access. You have to obviously be, um, you have to have some reason to go in there because it's an office block. But if you went up to the top floor, 
then up another stairwell, you end up on the balcony going along um, the uh, the top of the building where all the air conditioning rooms are and all that. Um, the main passenger lifts, you open a door which was unlocked and it was never locked. I can't even remember there was a door on it. But you go in, into this generator room and it's really loud. I mean, these generators were running like near enough 24 hours a day and you had to sort of like get past that. And I remember being scared of that room, it was so loud. And I had to like put blinkers on to get past them. Then up the ladder into the motor room, and they weren't, they were 1980s lifts, they weren't really old, they weren't really uh, relay logic. I used to take loads of pictures up there, and we also had some cameras actually in the lift cars, and that gave me another excuse to go up there because I was just servicing the power supplies that run those um, cameras in the lifts. And that's the tallest building I probably ever visited, that was 22 floors. There was another building called um, Bucklersbury House in London, which was knocked down about three years ago. There were some interesting lifts in there as well. Um, but that was just before YouTube come along. I mean, I had a perfect opportunity to film loads of old lifts from those buildings. And one of them um, is actually uh, this photo. Uh, this come from the building next to Bucklersbury House, which is called Temple Court. I did actually try to get into the motor rooms in those, but they're always locked. We did night work in these as well, so I could have filmed these easily, but why do I need to film them? This was before YouTube came along, so all I did is just took a few pictures. Damn shame, if only YouTube had come along two um, years before that. Um, next comes from MT Gaming, also known as Milo Tagne. <laughs> do you hate certain new lifts? I don't really hate new lifts. I don't really have any desire to film one. I mean, if you want to go and see one, then there's probably loads in your town centre. I'm more interested in the ones that um, are difficult to find, uh, older generation, ones that you don't find um, by just walking around, finding them yourselves in town centres. And uh, next one's from Nara Maggie Johnson. Why do you like air raid sirens? you got to have a variation of videos on your channel, I think. You know, I don't find any more lifts to film then I can take over with something else. I mean, I'm not saying I'm taking over with um, air raid sirens or escape sirens, as they're called. But it's just another interest, really. I like the air raid sirens because they are... And it's something that no one else has done. I mean, I did see a couple of movies about the Broadmoor sirens, but there was nothing else on YouTube. So you've got to, like, try and fill a gap if you've got a passion to do it. And I had got a passion to go around and find all them 13 sirens and no one else had done it, so that gives me an advantage on YouTube. And also, it got Che out of the house, off the Xbox, and we did that together. So that was a nice, like, father and son type video. Nick Turry, why the water tank phobia? Uh, water tank phobia, that was uh, connected with my um, Nan's house. I think I've answered this one in detail earlier. Next comes from Radio TV. What is the best and worst lift you have ever filmed? Best movie I filmed was with my Otis friend, um, and that was that Express DMR before it was before it was uh, modernised. And the worst lift I ever filmed was probably this one. I really don't know why I uploaded it because it's to me it's not really that interesting. Um, you may have a different opinion, but just for me, I don't really know why I uploaded it. Richard Wilson, I wonder what is the oldest working through the alarm you have come across. Loads really. I started work in 1989 and this was where all alarm systems were, well there was quite a few key switch panels out there, I mean old key switch panels. Uh, everyone was moving into the keypad era um, so there was loads of stuff which I looked at. Relay control intruder alarms would probably be um, a homemade one. The boss of my old company, uh, and that was called Blue Circle Security Systems, they used to manufacture their own control panel. Um, my boss used to make it in his garage, and there was loads of them out there. Uh, and all the engineers used to call it the biscuit tin, because that's what it resembled. It was um, a, a red metal box that you put on the wall, and it even had a lid in front of that, so you couldn't see any of the controls until you opened the lid. And it just reminds you of a biscuit tin, you know, open it up and expecting to find like packets of biscuits in there. On the front were some light bulbs, there was a, a key switch. Uh, inside was mainly relays. There was a few transistors and capacitors to make the timer circuits, but 
there used to be loads of relays in there and they used to pl um, unplug as well. So whenever one of these control panels um, was removed, um, I used to go in and take all the relays to use them for home projects. Uh, unusual alarm systems, I'm gonna try and find some pictures. So I took some pictures at the time, was um, a control panel which was made by RS, um, Radio Spares. It's a key switch panel with only one zone on it and, and someone had modified it and had drilled these rectangular holes all the way down one side and there was two rows of LEDs. There was red LEDs and green LEDs. Then there was a line of latching buttons. So you know you push it for on and then you push it again for off. And I think the green light indicated whether the zone was armed or not and the red one was if it went into alarm or not. And someone had actually gone to the length of making up a circuit board full of latching relays on it, drilled all these holes out and these were rectangular LEDs. I don't know why I didn't use round ones, it'd be a lot easier, but he put all these LEDs and switches all on the front of it. Uh, so that, I think that was my, um, it wasn't my project, but that was the most interesting like home-built alarm that I'd seen.